Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is word search. So in this question, we are given a M by N grid of characters called board and we are also given a string called word. Our task is to return a boolean value true or false. We have to return true if the word exists in the grid, else we have to return false. And how can you construct the word? The word can be constructed from letters of sequentially adjacent characters where adjacent characters are horizontally or vertically neighboring. So for example, if you are here, you can move in the horizontal direction to the left or right or you can go top or down. If you go top, you are going out of mode, so this is not a possible move. So this particular index has three possible moves. And it is also mentioned that the same letter cell may not be used more than once while building the word. So let's take this example and see how we can solve this question. So I've taken the same example and we are given the word A, B, C, C, E, D. So it is obvious that you have to start with the first letter. So we first find the number of rows and the number of columns and we start iterating through every character inside this board given to us until we find the first character. Luckily in this question we are already at the first character inside the word we have to search. So you have to begin your search here. You check the four possible directions that is top, down, left and right. So let's start with any of the first direction. Let's go left. If you go left you are going out of bounds, so this is not possible. If you go to the top, you are going out of mode, so this is not possible. And now if you are going right, you are going to a possible move and you have to check for the character B. And it is the character B you are moving to, so this is the right path. So now we are at character B. And since you are at character B, again you have four possible directions, top, left, bottom and right. And to this index position, you came from this index position. So there is no point going to the left. So to stop going to the left, you have to do something to the previous cell you are coming from. Since we came from left to right, you have to mark this particular index as visited. I am going to replace it with an empty character so this will become empty. So now when you are here and if you want to go left, there will be nothing so it marks as visited. So you are at this particular index and you have three possible moves. If you go to the top, you are going out of bounds. You are going to the bottom. Now you need character C but here you will have character F. So you backtrack, you don't continue the search here. So this does not lead to the right direction. So you have one more path to go. And now it is the character C which you are looking for here. So this is the right path. And since you are coming from left to right, you have to mark this particular index as visited. So I'll make this an empty character. Now for this particular index, you have to search for the next character which is C again. And now from the here, you have four possible directions. This is not valid. If you go here, you have character E. So this is not a right path. From here you can go to the bottom and you have the character C which you are looking for here. So this is the right path. Since you are coming from top to down, you have to mark this as visited. So I will make this a empty string. Now we need to search for the character E from here. You can go to the left, it is not giving you the character E. You can go to the right, it is not giving you the character E. You can go down and it is giving you the character E. So this is the right path. Since you are coming from top, you have to mark that as visited. So I will make this a empty character. Now from here you have to search for character D. You can go to the right. It is not giving you the required character. You can go down. It is going out of bounds. So this is not the right path. You can go to the left. And yes, you are finding the character D. Which is the expected character. So since you are coming from this particular index, mark this as visited. And there are no more characters to be searched here. So you come out and you end the iteration. Because you search for everything. So from this particular index, you have to backtrack and find its respective answer. So here it was actually E. From here it was C, from here it was C again, from here it was B and from here it was A. And that is the expected word which we were searching for. And how are you knowing you end the character? So initially you start with the count variable which is initially 0. And each time you find a character, you keep on incrementing count by 1. So that once count is equal to the length of word. So once count and word length are equal, you end the iteration. It means you found all the characters. Now let's take another example. So now you have to search for S. So start the iteration from top to down. So you start from this index. You check if it is S. No. So you move forward. So you can't find a S here. So you check the entire row. Now you find a S here. So you start your search here. From here you can search four possible directions. Here you are going out of bounds. It is not the next character you are searching for. The next character you are searching for is E. So you have to go for E. Here again it is not a E. So this is also not a right path. Here also it is not a E. It is not a right path. Since you explored all four directions and you couldn't find the required character, this S is not the right start. You find one more S here. So from here you can begin your search. And you have to search for the letter E now. Go to the top, check if it is the letter E, yes. So you go here, you are at 
E. And now you have to search for the next letter E again. So you can go in four directions. If you go to the top, you go out of bounds. If you go to the right, you go out of bounds. If you go to the left, you go to C. So it is not a possible path. And you explored all the directions and you couldn't find a E. So you end the search here and you come back to where S was. So you can't go here. If you go to the right, you go out of bounds. If you go to the left, it is C, but you need a E. So this is also not possible. If you go down, you are at E. So this is a correct search. And now this will become empty because you're coming from there. So that you can't go to the top and search. Now you have three directions. You have to search for a E again. You go out of bounds, you go out of bounds. And if you go to the left, you find a E, which is the expected letter you have to search. So this is the right path. And now since you came here, this will be the empty. And now count is equal to three and word length is also equal to three. And there is no more letters to be searched. So it means you have found the path. So you go back and you retrace the letters. So this is the possible path. So this is the path you will follow to find the word C. Now let's take a look at the Java program. So this is the main function given to us and you are given the character array board and the string board. You find the number of rows and the number of columns and you iterate through the input grid first using two for loops and you are checking for the first letter. So let's take the word as the first example A, B, C, C, E, D. So this statement states that find the letter which is matching the first letter A. So you start iterating through the words array from the first row and the first column. Check if this is a A. So this condition is true. And now we are calling the helper function. And here in the helper function, you are taking the board and the word as the inputs and i and j from where you are starting. So i and j are initially 0 and 0. And these are 1, 2 and 1, 2, 3. So you are starting from 0, 0. And count is 0, right? Initially because so the entire word's length is equal to 6. And the count is now just 0. And you are taking a helper function to perform the DFS operation. So this is the exit condition where this recursive call will end that when the count which you are passing here is equal to word length only then you will return true and this is for checking the boundaries. So this part of the code is for checking the boundaries and this part of the code is for checking if the current character you are at is not equal to the next character you want to search then you will return false. So for example if you are here and when you are going down it is a S. But you have to search for a B here because the next character you want to search is B. So this condition will fail as this will return false. But when you go here, it is a B and you want to search a B here. So this condition will pass here and this will return true. And for example, if you are here and when you go right, this is the boundary check that if the column, so here J will be equal to 4. So here you are checking if it's within the boundary, but here it will be more than the boundary. So this will fail. So similarly, these are the checks for the four directions, one, two, three, and four. And once you are done with the boundary check, now we are, it means that you have that character. So this is the character you want to move there now. So take that into a character temp and replace that character. So here it was A, right? When you are here and you again explore four directions, right? But here you don't want to explore this direction because you are coming from there only. So you want to replace this A with an empty character. So you want to remove this so that there is nothing here that is why you are replacing it with an empty character and then you are doing the recursive call for the four directions in every recursive call you are moving down direction here you are moving to the next row here you are going to the top row here you are going to the right column here you are going to the left column and in each recursive call you increment the count by one so that it means you have found that character and after these recursive calls once you find the search everything will be an empty character right and here you are replacing the empty characters with the temp variable. That is why you are storing it in a temp variable. So again, when these are empty, you get back those characters. First you'll get D, then you'll get E, then you'll get C, then you'll get C again, then you'll get B, and then you'll get A. And that is how you will get back the path. And finally, you will return the boolean value found true or false. And you're calling that function here. So this will return true. And once these two conditions meet, you will return true as the output. So like in third example, if for any uh, character if these conditions were haven't satisfied you will return false it means that you haven't found that word inside that grid so the time complexity of this approach big o of n where n is the length of the board into 4 power m where m is the number of letters inside the word and the space complexity is big o of m where m is the length of the word because here you are implementing recursion right so the recursive stack will be of max size m where m is the length of the word given to us. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.